Mr. Baum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Judiciary Committee. I'm here speaking as a victim of a violent crime. I'm testifying to help explain why the governor's bill 6667 is a bad idea when it comes to not allowing law-abiding citizens to carry in restaurants that serve alcohol and mandatory safe storage. In 2009, my husband Ben was shot seven times and killed in front of me by a man who I only realized that very night was stalking me. This occurred inside of a restaurant that served alcohol in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a gun-free zone. At that time in Tennessee, handgun carry permit holders were prevented by state law from carrying in these restaurants, even though you are a designated driver like I was. Because of the law at that time, I had to leave my legal permitted firearm that I normally carried for self-defense locked inside of my vehicle that night. I obeyed that gun control law. My stalker did not. He had no permit to carry the gun. He brought that gun into a gun-free zone illegally. I asked management to please remove him because I realized I was being stalked. When management confronted him and asked him to leave, he pulled a 45 from a shoulder holster under his jacket and shot my husband, killing him. I was disarmed and helpless to stop his attack. I will probably wonder for the rest of my life if I could have prevented that from happening, of course, I'll never really know. I was denied a chance. I was stalked and defenseless. Tennessee's law has now changed. As long as you can legally carry a handgun, you can now carry in these restaurants as long as you are not drinking any alcohol. Tennessee has not had a problem with this new law, and they have not tried to repeal this law. It has been in place since 2010. I would also warn you that forcing women to lock their legal gun up, safe storage, will make it impossible for them to protect themselves when needed. It sounds like common sense until you need to get to your gun quickly for self-defense. Please stop and consider the victims that you may be creating on the other side of this mandatory safe storage proposal. There will be unintended consequences and it will create more victims like me. Look, we all want our communities to be safe and we all want violence to end. However, as long as there are evil people in this world, good people must be able to protect themselves. Evil doesn't stop and say, okay, I'll let you unlock your gun and load your gun before I attack you. Or, oh, that's a no guns allowed sign. I can't, I can't carry there. Oh, it's a restaurant that serves alcohol, so I can't possibly hurt or kill people that are there or leaving there on their way to their car out in the parking lot. It's actually a target rich environment to harm good people, knowing that they are absolutely helpless. In closing, please don't make people helpless like I was. The citizens of Connecticut should be able to protect themselves from the type of evil that I have been faced with. Please support the basic human right of self-defense. Thank you. Thank you. Comment or question from members of the committee. Comment a question. Representative Dubisky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for coming in and telling your story. Um, when you, after your, uh, your tragedy where your husband was killed, did, did that influence the Tennessee legislature to change that law? Uh, yes, I actually worked with um, a Democrat, actually, a very pro-gun um, Democrat that understood the basic human right of self-defense, Senator Doug Jackson. He actually sponsored the restaurant carry bill. And um, yes, it, it, it did pass. I worked with him. He told my story on the Senate floor. And um, yeah, it's, it's not been a problem in our state. You know, good law-abiding people understand they're not allowed to drink alcohol, uh, and they don't. And uh, they, like I said, our lawmakers have not tried to repeal the law. And you say that, you're, that you found out about this stalker and that the stalker was coming after you. Um, did you know that? before uh, you, did you knew that before the, the shooting or did you find out afterwards? 
No, I, I knew that night. Um, my husband, Ben, and I, we owned a mobile karaoke business in Nashville. We both had regular corporate jobs, but we did this as a side job in the evenings. And this man was actually a karaoke customer. He had become somewhat of a regular, and he would come out to sing. And he started getting creepy, inappropriate. He started sending me social media messages that were very creepy and inappropriate. I deleted him. I blocked him. My husband asked him to please leave me alone. And, you know, I kind of wondered if the guy was stalking me. I wasn't for sure. He karaoke shows, but he was no longer singing. He would stand in the middle of the crowd and just stare at me. He wasn't doing anything illegal, but it was definitely what I think most women and men too, quite frankly, would qualify as, as very creepy. And it wasn't until that night that I realized, yes, this guy is stalking me. He came to a venue we had never seen him before. Um, where we were running our show and Ben had already asked him to leave me alone. So that's when I realized, okay, this is stalking. And that's when I asked management to remove him. Wow. Um, and do you feel that it might have been different had you been able to protect yourself and your family? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I'll never, like I said, I'll never really know. I can't tell you. Yes, I would be able to prevent this 100%. Um, I'll just never know. But, I, you know, I, I can tell you that I, I think it would have changed the odds. And I don't ever want to see good people helpless like we were. You know, this stat may seem unbelievable to you, but it's, it's, it is correct. You can, you can go and ask the experts. Um that work with stalking victims, um, one in three women in their lifetime and actually one in six men, and we're talking about a lifetime are potentially stalked in, in their lifetime. Now, granted what happened to myself and Ben is the extreme, but it's very scary. And, you know, people should be able to protect themselves. At least you would have had a had a chance. Um, well, thank you very much for your for coming in and, and telling your story. Um, we very much appreciate it. And um, thank you. And you know, sorry for your tragedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Representative Dubisky. Comment or question from other members of the committee? Comment or question? If not, uh, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, we we know it's difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Gregory Mitchell.